Good morning. Welcome back to Breakfast Elvis, and thanks for starting your day with us. Well, BT Vancouver's Riaz Magji was in Los Angeles this weekend to cover the Oscars. Here he is with a recap of the night's winners and, of course, the highlights. Well, the show may be over, but Tinseltown is still buzzing. What an incredible night it was for the 85th Oscars here in Los Angeles. We're here on the red carpet outside the Dolby Theatre, and you know the stars came out to play. Denzel Washington, Anne Hathaway, and Ben Affleck, just to name a few. All of them wondering who would claim Oscar's top prize. And tonight, it was the film that made its world premiere in Canada at the Toronto International Film Festival. Best picture is Argo. And the Oscar goes to... Argo. Argo continued its epic award season sweep after winning the top prize at every other major show. I think everyone in the movie, on the movie, worked on the movie, did anything with this movie, gets thanked. I want to thank Canada. It got critical acclaim right from the start of TIFF, Canada's film festival, and we were there for the first steps in its climb to the top. It's really, really exciting to premiere here in Toronto because so much of the movie is about uh, how the uh, Canadians helped us save these American lives. It's about, in, in some parts, you know, saying thank you, Canada. I was saying I was just watching City TV earlier at the hotel. When I get to Canada, immediately I turn on City TV. That's what he says. Despite winning Best Director at almost every other award show, Ben Affleck's Oscar snob made Argo the first movie in almost 25 years to win Best Picture without its director also being nominated. You're not entitled to anything. Uh, I was, I'm honored to be here, I'm honored to be among these extraordinary movies, and I'm really, really honored to win an Academy Award. He won the Golden Globe, the SAG, and the BAFTA, and last night, Daniel Day-Lewis made history for snagging the Oscar for Best Actor. <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis became the first person in history to win three leading acting Oscars, earning that third trophy for his portrayal of Abraham Lincoln. I do know that I've received so much more than my fair share of good fortune in my life, and I, I'm so grateful to the Academy for this beautiful honor. And the Oscar goes to Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence was literally swept off her feet when she won the lead actress prize. You guys are just standing up because you feel bad that I fell, and that's really embarrassing, but thank you. You're beautiful! Ms. Lawrence, just look behind you, please. Silver Linings Playbook also made its world premiere at TIFF and won the festival's People's Choice Award. Christoph Waltz, Django and Christoph Waltz adds a second supporting actor Oscar to his mantle, and we talked to him during award season about preparing for his role in Django Unchained. I got into this character by first of all learning my lines, second put on my gun belt, and third get up on the horse. And the Oscar goes to Miss Anne Hathaway. <laughs> No big surprise here, Anne Hathaway now the Best Supporting Actress trophy for her emotional performance in Les Miserables. And the Oscar goes to Ang Lee. Though Steven Spielberg was the favorite to win, it was Ang Lee at the helm of Life of Pi who took home the statue for Best Director. Life of Pi, Michael J. Life of Pi also earned Toronto's Michael Dana his very first Oscar for original score and he let us in on his creative process in scoring this epic tale. I read the book when it first came out, like all good Canadians, 10 years ago, and I, I was very moved by it. It, it. You know, it felt very personal to me, and I just tried to capture that feeling when I was writing the music. The nominees may have been feeling the pressure, but it was first-time Oscar host Seth MacFarlane who had to carry the weight of the most-watched awards show in the world. Let's find out how he did. And the quest to make Tommy Lee Jones laugh begins now. <laughs> Be our guest, be our guest, as we honor all the best with a telecast design to put your patience to the test. I, I would argue, however, that the actor who, who really got inside Lincoln's head was John Wilkes Booth. Oh, really, 150 years and it's still too soon, huh? Tear-jerking, laugh-inducing, or just plain awkward. As always, Oscar didn't disappoint when it came to creating memorable moments. I'm a robot named Ping, and I just want to learn how to swim. <laughs> In the movie that we saw, we saw your boobs. Not only
only did Adele's performance of Skyfall give everybody goosebumps, so did her acceptance speech. Paul Letworth for, um, oh God. <laughs> Mate, believing in me all the time. And my man, I love you, baby. So what's next for the Oscar-winning songstress? I don't know, maybe I'll do like a HBO special like Beyonce did. And then... <laughs> what an incredible weekend it's been down here in LA. Can't wait to do it again next year for Entertainment City. I'm Riaz Megji here at the Dolby Theater. We will talk with Riaz in mere moments live about uh, his reactions to uh, the parties afterwards and everything that went on there. Uh, it sounds like, for the most part, a really good night. Yeah, there was no obvious kind of down points that stuck out. No one was overly offended, I don't think. No serious wardrobe malfunctions. Uh, yeah, everything was kind of borderline there. there there's really? the usual knocks. It was far too long. It was Hollywood yes. celebrating themselves, talking about how wonderful they are. Uh, some people were offended by Seth MacFarlane, but I think those were the people who don't know who Seth MacFarlane is. Yeah, that's true. When You've you got... get Seth MacFarlane to host your show, you say, please offend us. That's how it works. <laughs> so you're asking for it. Yes. <laughs> You'd be disappointed if you didn't get that. So yeah, we'll bring you uh, all more stories from the Oscars coming up with Riaz very shortly. But right now, let's check on weather conditions. Let's say good morning to Jenna Khan.